Oh. Nonchalant. Okay. Yeah, very gentle. <laughs> this is episode 35. Wow. Of Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. And we're on episode 35, and this is now the third apartment. Wow. That we recorded in the third home, I yeah. shouldn't say. I don't know what your situation is. Um, same place though. Have a house? Uh, live in a house, yeah. We're looking at the possibility of buying because um, my finances are better than they've ever been, really. Uh, so great. Uh, but also, I live in LA, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah. LA's finance is also very good. Yeah. I guess what I really should see, say is I live anywhere, so we'll see, because it's not like it's the only places where it's easy to buy a house are places you'd go, oh, I wouldn't mind dying there. Sure. But living there. Or, oh, I, I knew a guy who was from close to that place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure at my age, I'll make friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think so. They, they probably like weirdos in that town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they probably like has their own shack and manifesto weirdos more than <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah, more than like, hey, I want to hear my new joke. <laughs> so the, it's it's very early in the episode for me to do this, so I don't want this to be jarring, but I'd like to mention the song we we uh, selected. I know it's very okay. early. It's a new format for us, but go ahead. So I'm going to go on record as saying, I don't think I've ever heard this song before. Had you heard it before? I had not heard it or of it. Right. I didn't know it was in the world. And until I, and I couldn't find it anywhere but on YouTube. Yeah. I found a version not sung by Billy Joel, not on YouTube. And then the one by Bill, hearing Billy Joel sing it, I had to go on YouTube as well. It's the it, only way. I don't think he does it in concert. Here's what <laughs> also I find very neat i really like this song i have mixed feelings okay good i okay. should have listened i mysteriously i didn't listen to the other artists sing it which i should have done because then i would have some sense uh of what he was going for yeah uh it um but you can tell like at what point in the career this happened because it sounds a lot like everything else on stormfront Sure. It's got that vibe. Uh, he goes I, at it real hard. Yes. And it feels to me, so one of the things I like about it is, so well, we often talk about, hey, is he trying to sound like Bob Dylan? Is, is he trying to sound like Bobby Darren? He never did that, but that would be great. <laughs> uh, I don't think he's trying to sound like nobody but a rocker. Yeah. And <laughs> definitely trying real hard to sound like a rocker. And I think he's pulling it off pretty good. You know, it reminds me of um, so my friend Tom and I will often go see the Bare Naked Ladies in concert. He really oh. loves them. And I've come to love them as well. And anything off of their new albums, Tom will sometimes say, you hear this song? Imagine what a big hit it would be if like Selena Gomez just recorded it because she's young and people would listen to it yeah and i think that listening to this song i'm like you know had it been the right artist this song would have got right country artist right rockin artist mm -hmm. this song would have got no would have been of note maybe it <laughs> even been a grammy thing or a big deal people would have had opinions about it but because it's by an old man <laughs> yeah um definitely i've done that with a lot of songs i have like artists that i like who no one has heard of and i always think oh justin timberlake should do this song it's a really good song and then people would be like oh we should find this small artist yeah that only alex knows about 
and <laughs> make him famous. I want that for my my little artists that I like. Absolutely, because you think they're great. Uh, there's an artist who currently lives in New York. His name is Kevin Ray. And it bothers me that nobody knows who he is a little bit because he's really good. Yeah, you feel bad for him. Like you did all the things you're supposed to do. You wrote wow. good songs and you sing them really well and you're still not famous. Oh, man. Um, he wrote this song. Uh, and this is one of the reasons I love this fucking guy. <laughs> he wrote this song called No One Else. And uh, he's he wrote, a, he wrote a lot of great songs. Feel free to look them up. Kevin Ray, Big Trash Day is one of his songs. Great song. <laughs> but he wrote this song called No One Else. And I was in the room when he debuted the song and I'm listening to the lyrics and I'm there with a friend of Mar my wife, Mary Jo's and a friend of mine, lovely girl, very pretty girl that we all knew and was a very talented singer in her own right. And we're listening to the song. That's a very nice song. And my wife gets this look on her face and then I'm listening to the lyrics and I get the same look on my face and we look <laughs> at the girl and we're like, I wonder when she's going to realize this is about her. <laughs> and he pulled that off beautifully and i've only ever seen that done well in a movie wow that's a pretty cool uh thing to be present for yeah it's nice when <laughs> when you beat them to the realization yeah and then she did this thing where she just didn't want to be egotistical so she's just like this is <laughs> It's fantastic. I was in the room once when an artist debuted a song that was named for a friend of mine. Mm. Um, and uh, she had introduced me to this artist and we used to go all the time. And then he was like, this uh, song is named after uh, this lady, Anne Marie was her name. And then he said, <laughs> then he went on to say very explicitly, the song's not about you. <laughs> I just used your name. Because it has good meter. And I just saw like she kind of like got sadder and sadder the more he explained that it was had nothing. It's not you. <laughs> You're not the girl in the song. Let me make it clear. And then he I realized what he was doing and like just went further. It was very fun. No, nobody and, would write yeah, a song. He was happy it wasn't a better. It'd be great if he's just nobody would write a song about you. Come on. But <laughs> you're not uh memorable <laughs> but your name has the right number of syllables <laughs> it's kind of what he said basically. Uh, yeah kevin ray someday i hope he's famous probably won't be because most people aren't yeah <laughs> it would be it would be hard to manage if it were the other way around well that's true that is very true um, so I like the song and, um, and before we get into the song I'll just say by the way I've also been going crazy on reacquainting myself with Joan Jett and the Blackhearts because I needed something different to listen to yeah man, man she is a bad, bad lady she is great <laughs> she is great yeah God bless her I also want to note that um you said you were going to say the name of the song real early in the podcast, and you have not said the name of the song yet. I didn't, which want, is to, great. I didn't want to upset people by doing that. <laughs> I probably forgot. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't break what's working for us. <laughs> <laughs> so the name it's of the going song. going so smooth. Yeah. The name of the song, and last week it was the clue that Alex had no chance of getting, uh, was it is... Yes. Christmas in Fallujah. That is the name of the song. Christmas. Christmas in Fallujah. Yes. Yeah. It's very Karnak. Yeah. Christmas in Fallujah. Yeah. I don't have a joke. Oh, there might. Come on. You got something. <laughs> um. Oh boy. I, like I, good, uh, Christmas in Fallujah. I got something. Okay, go ahead. Christmas in Fallujah. Yeah, I'm thinking. Okay. All right, you ready? That's right, Ed. 
how I describe dinner with the in-laws on the holidays. And then it's a sucky one. That's all. <laughs> ballpark. That's ballpark. <laughs> uh, uh, and when then is towards... a good time for a Christmas tree to explode? <laughs> yes. And then Ed doesn't like <laughs> the joke and he goes, oh, like, you're so funny, you filthy drunk. And it gets too real. That's that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calls him a filthy drunk. Thirty-eight minutes of that, and then they talk to Tony Kane. Christmas in Fallujah. Uh, Christmas in Fallujah. Weird I, that it wasn't a hit. <laughs> yeah, I was delighted to discover that I liked the song, and part of it was when you discover a song that's not terrible by an artist that you like. You haven't heard anything new because they don't make nothing new. So some of it was that, but I also think he fucking pulled off the rock and rolling of it. It's very rock and rolling. Yeah. Um, the band played on it. It's not, it doesn't sound like a Billy Joel song, whatever that, you know, there's no sax break. Yeah. And not a lot of tinkling. Do you think it sounds like what he would probably sound like if he tried making more music now. That's what it felt like. I was like, oh, this would have been what he probably ended up doing. Oh, yeah. I wonder. I wonder. This sounds to me like, remember when he did Glass Houses, it was largely because the producer said, you have to do rock and roll or you're going to disappear. You have to make rock and roll songs. But that was 1980. <laughs> so those were rock and roll songs. Right. And I think you said this to him in 2008. If you said you have to do rock and roll, you would do this. Yeah. Because this is like <laughs> what like hard rock and sounded like in 2008, I presume. Like a Foo Fighters ish kind of, uh, yeah. Yeah, just going hard at it. And now Got a lot of. Not a lot of concern for the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> Some. I when we uh, get into them, I kind of like these lyrics. They're very bare bones. There's some stuff. Yeah. And there's I'll say this in there. It reminds me a little bit. Now we know he loves the Beatles, of course. Who does it really? Mm -hmm. But um it John Lennon went through the same damn thing where when he started to record stuff later what he was interested in doing mostly was stripped down very little production. I mean, to, I mean, sinfully unproduced things. <laughs> <laughs> and this feels like that. This feels like, ah, uh, you know what? I don't necessarily need the Fallujah sound effect this time, whatever that would be. <laughs> yeah, no chopper. There's no chopper effect. Yeah. There is one Middle East sounding thing that I'm not sure how I feel about. Do you know what I'm talking about in the song? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I wish that wasn't there, but I don't hate it. No, I mean, it's fitting enough. Yeah. I'm more, I'm more interested in like the philosophical issue of like, is it? Christmas in Fallujah because they don't celebrate it there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've frozen again. Yeah, I was I was waiting. I think we were both frozen. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, but not in real life. We're fine, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, the don't... fan is far enough away. It won't hit me. <laughs> um yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah, it isn't, of course. It isn't Christmas in Fallujah. It is, is it's, uh, you know, December in Fallujah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, that's fair. Although, um, I think, I think it's from the perspective of if you were in Fallujah, for you, it is Christmas. It's not, yeah. But it's fair still, enough. Yeah, it's 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 a valid, interesting question. And I think the perspective is from the person who does celebrate Christmas. You know, it's funny when yeah. you're 
when you were a kid and you thought about Christmas, you just thought everybody celebrated Christmas. If you said that's the thing, that's the thing that's interesting about it is you never said like, oh, um, it's my Christmas or it's Christmas for my people. You would just say it's Christmas. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Rosenberg. Yeah. Christmas. And more than likely, Mr. Rosenberg would just begrudgingly go, yep, it's Christmas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a tree. Yeah. <laughs> My I, kids want the tree. I'm going to have to take the day off, too, because that's just how it works. Because it's Christmas everywhere. Yeah, but we'll see if I can afford to take the day off for Yom Kippur, you jackasses. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's now, he, now he gets it, I think. Things oh, yeah. have changed. Well, and he's doing well now. He worked really hard. This is back then. This is back then. He's retired now. Yeah. Yeah. He's fun. You know, sometimes he'll host a Christmas party and it's funny. He's a nice guy. <laughs> um, every Jewish person I know does both of them. Yeah. For very practical reasons, because it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. The uh fine fellow who shepherded me shepherd it's kind of a funny word to use in this context mm. uh, into my early judaism d d does not he ah. would not celebrate both but he doesn't have an opposition to christmas he's just like yeah we just don't do that fair enough yeah and we do we do both in our house because uh the wife is a shiksa so you gotta do both <laughs> it's one of my early jokes is i was like one of the best parts about uh converting is that i used to just be married to a lady now i'm married to a hot chick so. <laughs> <laughs> now you're breaking the rules yeah exactly <laughs> first time i wore a yarmulke my wife cried is that true yep did you put it on right after sex <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> is that what Put it on the tip of my wiener. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was right then. She was right. Well, it was funny because we went to uh, synagogue and and she was being very nice and supportive. And I think what she thought was she was going to have to start going to synagogue. And I was like, if you don't want to go, you don't have to go. <laughs> but after she was crying and we in the car, just kind of to make her laugh as I was like, you know, I'm sorry you're sad. But the other thing that bothers me about you crying is, I never knew you were an anti-Semite. <laughs> <laughs> I made her laugh and we calmed down. That has to work. Change is scary. And you could always just say, like, what are you crying about? My people have suffered for five <laughs> years. That's right. <laughs> Turn it around. And I was like, you don't have to do nothing. You can eat whatever you're going to eat. I keep kosher. You don't have to keep kosher. It's fine. And, you know, and I, what I've learned is I keep kosher to the point that I keep more, more kosher than most Jews I know. So, <laughs> yeah. And well done. And I know a lot of Jews who are like, I still keep kind of kosher. Oh, I eat bacon, of course. <laughs> like, well, <laughs> I'm not an idiot. Yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> it's a very old book. Those rules are silly. Yeah. If he, if he knew about bacon, he would have said it was fine. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's why uh, Jesus came. <laughs> that's about right. bacon. So, Christmas in Fallujah. Uh, when did this come out? <laughs> I think it was 2008. Okay. So it's in an you know it's in a it's written underneath the uh, hanging truth of nonstop wars and constant going sending people over to beat up arabs and spread the good news it's written mm -hmm. in that sort of context and and i think written in the context of a progressively advancing awakening that that might not be the best foreign policy yeah so it I, is like, uh, um some of the songs you got during vietnam yeah yeah <laughs> There was a lot of uh, there were a lot of songs where they used heavy metaphor and stuff to uh, talk about 
Vietnam. And then there were other songs where they just basically were like, Vietnam is bad. Yeah. And we should not be there, but uh, but it rhymes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like that. And this is uh it, this doesn't feel too heavy handed to me. I'll go ahead and start to this is nice, by the way, because we can just go verse, 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 because it's just all different words, which is nice. Um, Christmas in Fallujah. <laughs> True. It's evening in the desert. I'm tired and I'm cold, but I am just a soldier. I do what I am told. Man, that is pretty clear cut, and I like it. I like the okay, uh, put people in a place and a frame of mind. And it's not very sentimental about being anything. It's just doing this dumb job. And whoever this yeah. character is, this character is over the initial flush of like, I'm serving my country. They probably still feel that way, but to a degree, they're like, yeah. Just doing the job I was told to do. Yeah. So there's um, a I do like he definitely got over uh, all the criticism remember all the criticism about uh, good nights I gone uh, you you can't sing from the point of view of a soldier because you uh, were a draft dodger and he caught a lot of shit for that and then he <laughs> came back and did this song yeah. with the line but I am just a soldier yeah so clearly yeah. Uh, thick headed if nothing else yeah, and a side note that the to me, I'm like, depending upon why the person's a draft dodger, that person understands at least some aspect of war because they knew enough not to go. Yeah, they have a we point of view. Though. Yeah, yeah, and you don't want that guy there. Yeah, no, you know what you you know you don't uh, want that be much help. That fat fingered little guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah it's it's uh there's nice economy there yeah i like that a lot and and i stress this a lot is i think the song kind of rocks in a very <laughs> old guy making a rock and song way yeah it's the way you rock on your 12th album yeah it's like if you hear anything new by neil young it's like this <laughs> Just this is actually, I think, better than any <laughs> Neil Young. Yeah. Oh, mm. old Neil Young. Shots fired. Yeah, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan. I know people like Neil Young. I'm just always feel like he was a little up his own ass, but that's fine. <laughs> it's his right. It yeah. works for some people. Hey, it's his ass. <laughs> that's right. I'm not. I'm not judging. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'll go. Yeah. We came with the Crusaders to save the Holy Land. It's Christmas in Fallujah, and no one gives a damn. Um, now he's our old sarcastic friend. I don't think he really thinks they're Crusaders. Uh, I don't think he thinks they're saving the Holy Land. I think he's being very sarcastic and maybe referencing um, George W. Bush's mention of crusades and crusading. Yeah. Because he would use crusaders and crusading a lot in his speeches. Yep. Um, which made nobody in the Middle East happy. Yeah. It, uh, for... <laughs> for historically justified reasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think the word crusade comes from the Latin for cross, does it not? Yeah. My assistant fell asleep. <laughs> and uh, anyway. I th I'll tell you what, Billy Joel is more likely to be cognizant of why he's saying crusader than, than Bush was. By far, yeah. So, and now I kind of think you almost get the answer to your question about is it Christmas in Fallujah? Because we came with the crusade, crusaders to save the Holy Land. It's Christmas in Fallujah, and no one gives a damn. 
I think it's a it's kind of a indictment of bringing you know your Western perspective in here. Right. So I think. Yeah. I also think that no one gives a damn on either side. Yeah. Yeah, and I and sadly, I think that's apt. There's people people, <laughs> yeah. on the, people on the ground who give a damn because their entire life is disrupted and they liked it when there were roads for a while. <laughs> like, remember when there was a school? We liked that school. <laughs> I like this next yeah. one. This next one had that we're creeping into a dear John. And I just got your letter and this is what I read. You said, I'm fading from your memory. So I'm just as good as dead. That sucks. I mean, <laughs> it sucks. Um, yeah, uncharacteristically harsh, even for him. Yeah. I don't love, I mean, I'm of two minds about the inclusion of the Dear John. I guess it's part of the war experience and the war song experience. Yeah. I'm sure it happens constantly. Um, but it feels cliche, maybe. I don't know. I mean, the whole rest of the song is really about specifics about the war. And this yeah. is one little side trip into this soldier's personal experience. I think I agree with you. And I think maybe one of the problems is if, and, and it's a fine choice to make, but it's a weird choice to make because usually if you hear a war song that's, a Dear John kind of song, then that's what the song's about. Right. And, and if, the war is background. Yes. And if the war becomes foreground, the oftentimes the soldier becomes fairly faceless, a cog right. and machine and all of that. Right. And it might actually, we could even argue that this could be a bold choice, even if we don't think it works. Because you say you're, a, you make a guy a cog in the machine, but then you bring up a thing that reminds you that he's a person. That's, that has some validity to it. But the question is, does it work? Well, I'll tell you, I do like the aspect of, uh, I'm fading from your memory, so I'm just as good as dead. So it's like, maybe I won't get killed by the war, or maybe I will, but it, this war has already killed me. Yeah. Uh, this way. Yeah. And probably, you know, 10 to 15 other ways. Did you, uh, do you know anybody who served, by the way, in the Iraq or Afghanistan or any of those places? I do. Yeah. A handful of people. And I, yeah, they are a, are a little bit killed. Yeah. My nephew, man, uh, you know, he was my nephew. So I was always like the guy who took him to play video games and, Took him for ice cream, causing trouble and being hilarious. And he was a goofy, goofy kid. And he's a goofy, goofy adult in a lot of ways. But man, did it suck when he first came home. He struggled. He he lost okay. buddies. He had this arm, he had this band on his hand, like right that he always wore, the real tight metal band that was for a friend who had died because he just never wanted to forget his friend. And the damn thing kept breaking. So then he got a tattoo of a band instead. Because he was like, I'm not going to have this break. And I'm never going to have that gone. Because, and, uh, and Lord, it's just funny, you know. And then I would, other folks I know who have served, who would, when they would meet my nephew, would go, yeah, you can see it in his eyes. That he's seen things that, you know, a person would prefer not to see. Yeah. And yeah. he was, he was a lot of, you know, I grew up on military bases, so I saw a lot of versions of that. Yeah. And he was, a he was definitely a flush of nine 11, got to go serve my country and good for him. And, and he certainly did it with honor, but, but, but yeah, you're right. That is a good lyric. I'm as good as dead, but is anything as good as dead? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to find out. <laughs> oh, that's a funny line. Uh, 
<laughs> we are the armies of the empire. We are the legionnaires of Rome. See, now it makes me think that he's being very intentional about crusaders because yeah. we are the armies of the empire. We are the legionnaires of Rome. It's Christmas in Fallujah and we ain't never coming home. <laughs> that is fantastic. I always like a we ain't never. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do. It's yeah, it's an interesting way to talk about the history of people invading the Middle East. Yeah. Ultimately unsuccessfully every time. Yeah. And um, from the Roman Empire to the current empire to like the Russians in Afghanistan. Yeah. Which is a line from another song. Yeah. And we ain't never coming home, man. That's a, there's two things going on in that line that are brutal. Of course, is there's many soldiers who do never come home because yeah, of course they die and that sucks. But then there's the other aspect of these specific wars. We're clearly referencing the fact that this is this, never-ending conflict that was started out with oh this is going to be easy right man there we're we're i don't you hey remember that liberator stuff <laughs> i don't know if you still remember that but <laughs> I, yeah. that is, yeah i'm actually a little jealous by the way and i i i admire what you get because this next set of lyrics i love I'd love. So you, get to, you get to read those. Those are some good ones. I like a lot. Oh, good rock lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> we came to bring these people freedom. We came to fight the infidel. There is no justice in the desert because there is no God in hell. <laughs> Yeesh. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess if you're going to do a protest song. Yeah. Go all the way. Um, I'm confused by we came to fight the infidel. Me too. Because locally, you're the infidel. Yes. Or is he saying that, according to real Muslims, the Taliban would be in infidelic? You know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't see that from Billy Joel. No. No. Too many moves. And I, yeah, so either, so you, I'm going to say something you normally say, but first I'll say something I will say, I sometimes <laughs> say, which is he could mean it ironically because we're the infidels because right. we don't refer to people as infidels. We call right. everybody terrorists. That's, all, that's our thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're all terrorists because you don't want us there. Um, they say infidel. So he could be ironic or, and this is something you've often pointed out, it rhymes with hell. Yeah, that feels like it might be the case. <laughs> I feel like the second two lines got written first. Yeah. Yep. Ah, God. Yeah, for sure. And I, I don't mind it. I really like it because there is no justice in the desert because there is no God in hell. If I'd written those two lines, I sure as shit would try to make sure they ended up in the song because those are two good lines. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, if I had written those two lines, I'd be a terrible stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys yeah. ever notice there's no justice in the desert? <laughs> <laughs> because but, there's yeah. no God in hell. Good night, yeah. everybody. We know. We're in a casino. <laughs> we're aware of these things. Uh, this is a, She came with us. She, and she's going away now. Where'd you go? But for how long? For how long? <laughs> Was that a little Gaffigan? Yeah. But for how long? Yeah. <laughs> no justice in the desert. No God in hell. Ed, uh, did you hear that? There's no God in hell. Yes. I know. <laughs> I'm in hell. What? You weren't that bad a guy. You filthy drunk. <laughs> uh, the next one's pretty good, too. Now, Economy of lyrics. I like the fact that here we go, trade and verses. There's been no chorus. It's been no chorus. That's a good thing sometimes. I I think this really works for that. This song. You would not want yes. it's Christmas in Fallujah. So you would not want that. <laughs> no bridge. All the children sing. 
<laughs> Maybe I do want that. Maybe you do a little bit. Um, I think it's good because obviously he was aiming for uh, rage. Yeah. And uh, rage is notorious for not pausing. Yeah. So I think it's the way to go and just blow right through it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty dope in that regard. I like, like I said, I think, I think I may listen to this now and then if it becomes possible to listen to it somewhere else other than YouTube. Because <laughs> YouTube. I think I kind of like the song. Um, they say Osama's in the mountains deep in a cave near Pakistan, but there's a sea of blood in Baghdad, a sea of oil in the sand. That's mm -hmm. pure politics, baby. <laughs> yep. We're in the wrong place. Yep. That is pretty great. And there was definitely that grim. Uh, I, I remember, I don't remember Bush's exact words, but at some point in some press conference, they're like, they were asking him about the search for Osama bin Laden and he more or less caught to the fact that they just weren't worried about it anymore. Right. And it was very, it was upsetting to me at the time it still says a lot, to, uh, as far as I'm concerned, about the criminality of that particular administration. Yeah, that was sort of a tacit admission that, oh, that wasn't the point. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're kind of looking for him, but we got what we wanted. Yeah. A way and, in. And apropos of nothing, um, I don't like Michelle treating him like he's adorable. Yeah. I get the instinct. Yeah. Um, and I guess if he's around, what else do you do, I suppose? I don't know, but it's a little, yeah, I don't love it. Um, also, I think it, looking at this lyric, it was 2008 when this was written. Yeah. And I guess we did think <laughs> Osama was in the mountains in a cave. But in retrospect, that was such a crazy thing to think. He was like, the uh, fucking hero to most of the Middle East. Yeah. And the son of an oil billionaire. There was no chance he was going to fucking squat in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, I hope they don't find me. Yeah. Of course, he had a fucking compound and a bunch of wives and porn. <laughs> you were not going to find him, you know, well, where was the hideout? The um, um, spider hole? We're in good fire. This better old, yeah. We're yeah. But, um, like if Trump ever disappears, they're not going to look for him in the woods. Yeah. By the way, of all the bad things Trump has done, man, he's also like, if you golf that much, you should be a little good at it. Right? I mean, it's my favorite North Korea parallel that everyone who plays golf with him talks about how well he played <laughs> like Lindsey Graham saying that like the last time he played he with Trump Trump birdied the first three holes and I don't believe that because I can see Trump yeah I mean, he's never broken 90 in his life yeah yeah I can look at his swing and tell you about what he scores I will say and this is a deep insult Barkley's a better fucking golfer than he is. Wow. That's really, <laughs> that's cruel. Yeah. I don't like Donald Trump, but that was cruel. Yeah. I, hey, I'm an edgy comic. That's true. <laughs> that's what they said at the uh, casino entrance. That's right. Um, by, where the old people are like, I don't know if I like those jokes, but finally a comic who's talking about presidents golfing again. <laughs> Uh, oh. a sea of blood and a sea of oil eh, all right i'll allow it yeah i don't mind it at all because hey a lot of uh, generally your protest songs the good ones and the bad ones aren't very shy about having a very clear-cut pointed point of view that's very liberal and very and yeah you're right Mostly you were shooting people for oil. That's just true. It's just true. And by 2008, very obvious. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, you can't have the wishy-washy. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good idea. Yeah. It's very, it's complicated. <laughs> no, no. It, they tried to make us think it was complicated for the first couple of years. Yeah. And it was like, well, we, uh, our oil. Oh, no. Yeah, we like, we like the oil. And as long as the one guy was being a good caretaker of the oil, but he's gotten a little, um, you know. All right. I mean, we put him there. A. Whitney Brown mentioned that when he was on SNL, for crap's sake. That was during the Reagan administration. Have you seen that clip, by the way, of A. Whitney Brown talking about Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden on SNL? I have not. It's crazy because you look at it and you go, wait, what fucking year did he do this bit? And no one's laughing because nobody knows the names. <laughs> right. So he you know, you did a lot. Yeah. He it's like, here's a Whitney Brown. Hey, I'm a Whitney Brown. Someday I hope to be the Whitney Brown. Then he does all this political stuff that I guarantee you that you didn't know about, I didn't know about, but a Whitney Brown was like, um, I guess no one's gonna ever know what I'm talking about. Oh, great, now they do. Oh. Right. Yeah, that guy was a secret genius. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He yeah. was. Uh, he was deep, deep cuts all the time. Yeah. Which uh, is why you and I know who he is, and not many other people. How many people? If you name your favorite uh, weekend update feature. Yeah. <laughs> Stefan. Yeah, no one's going to, yeah, if anybody who does that is is being a contrarian. They don't mean it, but they should. They wow. Should. Yeah, all right. I think you're up for the last one. Between the Tigris and Euphrates, another day comes to an end. It's Christmas in Felucia. Peace on earth. <laughs> Goodwill to men. Great. I always like a mention of the Tigris and Euphrates. Yeah. The Fertile Crescent. Yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's a very cliche way to end what we're saying, but I'm okay with it. It's fine, because you got to get out some way. I do like recasting uh, actual Christmas song lyrics in a dark light. Yeah. Like that. Is there such a thing as a dark light? <laughs> trying to say. <laughs> and unlike the real place, at least Billy Joel came up with a reasonable exit strategy for the song. <laughs> very very that's why you chose this song for that joke yep, yep i've been i prepared i've been leading you there i was like oh don't let him get off the course too much i got the closer i got this <laughs> you are you set me up the, <laughs> you're the comedy taliban <laughs> uh, oh man can i put that on my poster <laughs> <laughs> would you uh uh, comes yeah. the comedy Taliban, and then I'm just talking about my dogs, and everybody's like, "The fuck was that thing on the poster?" <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna thought I was gonna see, but it ain't this. That would be great. He just did a joke about how hard it is to pee. That's not what I expect from the comedy <laughs> Taliban. Uh, it is the, hard. the Taliban does pee jokes. <laughs> Those guys are and there's a lot of old guys. Yeah, that's true. Well, they probably do. <laughs> um, it is. It then just goes into it's Christmas in Fallujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, which I kind of like. Yeah, it almost rhymes. It's it is, <laughs> it is good to go. Hey, th these words are similar. Uh, and then "ura" at the end. Yeah, is that? I don't remember that. How did that go? Was that like a? Military cadence, oorah. Yeah, it was the military. Yeah. Oorah. So you had mixed feelings about it. In looking at the lyrics, what you, well, first of all, how many times did you listen to it? Just the once or a couple times? Uh, just the once. Okay. I was like, yeah, I don't think it's great, but it's a terrible recording. I think it's live. Mm -hmm. Very hard to suss out what it's supposed to sound like. Yep. When it's live on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so I, I didn't give it a fair shot. And then there's the, uh, you know what, just as a sort of a, a thing for us to talk about a little bit next week, um, listen to the other version of it. Just tell me what you think. Oh, I should, yes. Uh, that'll, that'll, ask, you'll, ask Dylan. Yeah, you'll enjoy that, I think. Well, it gives you something to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't something. tell me how to feel about it. Correct. <laughs> um, I, so I, in, in a first pass, just listening to the song, I liked it kind of right away. I thought, I think I like the song. Looking at the lyrics, I think I like it a little more. I think, Great. I think this was just a really good effort. Also, it didn't feel like it didn't feel jaded. It just felt like he really wanted to do this damn song because he was done recording when he made this song. Wasn't it written for uh, an event? Yeah. What was the event? Um, it was I don't a, remember. I read about it and then I forgot. I believe it was a Taliban fundraiser. That's what it was. That's what it was. That's why they're really flourishing. Yeah, it was. Didn't they make so them. much money on this. <laughs> no, I don't, released it non-sarcastically. Yeah, I don't remember what the event was. I wonder if we, you know what? There's this little, uh, what is it? It's a little thing on my computer. Ah. You gonna bing it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thing. Let's see. So it Wikipedia. Oh, here we go. Christmas is in Fallujah is a single written by Billy Joel and performed by Cass Dillon. A couple weeks after they recorded it in a studio, Billy Joel introduced Cass Dillon on stage in Chicago for a live performance of the song. He had written it is the second song of original material with lyrics he had written since 19. Uh, exclusively iTunes and and all the proceeds were donated to Homes for Our Troops, a nonprofit organization that builds specially adapted homes for American service members returning from Iraq. Fallujah is a city in Iraq to let you know, and Afghanistan, uh, particularly uh, veterans with uh, severe dif disabilities. So it was a charitable thing, yeah. Good. Which by, the way, which, by the way, if at that point, if anybody's running their mouth, how could you write a song like this? Uh, the song that's uh, helping veterans? What? What? Tell, tell me what your problem is. Oh, uh, yeah, that's smart. He learned. Yeah. So, what, what was your issue? Because this is helping people who need homes. But right. yes, you make your stand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think he did something similar with uh, Down East or Alexa. I feel like he then uh worked with an organization that was trying to keep small fishermen in business on long island yeah and continues to work with them yeah even though he had uh, dodged fishing yeah <laughs> he went to canada so he wouldn't have to fish <laughs> and then he, then he got there and he's like oh i messed up they do all the fishing here that's all the fishing. It's all fishing in canada do your research man i yeah so just uh, for the record if there is a record, I know Bruno Mars keeps copious notes. Um, I <laughs> like this song. And and I like that it's a song I hadn't heard before. I always like that. Yeah. I would like to hear a clean version. Yeah. So I will listen to that. Well, and now yeah. you know what the problem is. You're like, I, do I have to get it on iTunes? And maybe you do, because maybe anytime you want it, the proceeds go to help out the veterans and that's not such a bad thing that's not so bad i'll listen to it a bunch of times yeah there you go I, 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 back. i'll listen to that cast dylan version of it too so yeah 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 so don't, don't be mad cast dylan i'm listening yeah you should be more famous yeah you should yeah based you, on who's writing songs for you but you and my friend kevin ray should be super famous yep Look into it. Yep. It would do it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. He sings the thing about the war. He sings the thing about this lady who was very pretty. <laughs> oh, great. Was, uh, speaking uh -huh. of pretty ladies and pretty people, oh. look at so, all. Some pretty ladies behind you from the uh, perhaps late 1960s, early 1970s. 
Yeah, um, I would even say not the 60s. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Uh, ladies from the 70s wearing some high-waisted pants. Indeed. Indeed. These are, there's a, for this, by the way, you know, that a decade, apropos of nothing, and not, not important to the clue, mm -hmm. fashions were kind of, kind of dope, actually. Get, get made fun yeah. of a lot, but that stuff is pretty fun. And I feel like I will see that a lot in Brooklyn. Even now? Even now. The high-waisted pants are back, for sure. Oh, well, question for you. If you see a lady in, I mean, because that's it's the wrong decade. How would you describe that lady? Oh, she's a, a retro. She's an old-fashioned girl. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah, you could say that about her, but how would you describe somebody who's like, got that that vibe from that decade? <laughs> uh, is a hippie kind of a a mod lady no no you were close to the first time oh he's kind of a hippie chick no you were closer with the the 70s stuff yeah oh, 70s yes she's, she's uh out of style maybe yeah yeah that's that you are on to something how well so how maybe, that, maybe that's not her style yeah maybe well <laughs> That's not it, but that's pretty great. Oh, damn it! <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's almost like she's she's stuck. Uh huh. It's almost like she's stuck. Frozen in time. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Trapped, yeah. trapped in amber. Trapped is close, boy. That's close. So uh, trapped and stuck. Frozen. Frozen trapped. in time. Yeah, stuck, trapped. Um, what what you know? Well, huh? I wonder if she could find her way out of it. I, uh, hope, I don't know if she could though. Trapped, trapped in a maze. She's yeah, she stuck. may not even know the way out. What did you just say? She's caught. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, well, maybe it's more if she could figure out the way out, but maybe she don't know the way out. Oh, so she's lost in time. Man. Lost. What? <laughs> lost. Yeah, she's lost. She's lost. She's lost. Uh, girl. She's... Where is she lost? <laughs> lost in the 70s. Yeah, that's where she's lost. And what's the song? I don't know. Oh, okay. It's from Turnstiles. Oh, baby, I think you are lost in the 70s. Oh, baby, oh, yeah. the music. She ain't what she used to be. Remember oh, fuck. I know that song. We just listened to it not long ago. Oh, baby, you lost in the 70s. Yeah, he does like a little reggae voice. Yep. Like, fuck. Which is not problematic at all. No, perfectly fine. <laughs> it's the same album. No, it's a different album where he did the uh, Spanish voice. Ah. <laughs> uh, 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 um. Oh man. And you know what's great though? I loved the like 70s music scene because man, bumping beats. If you man, if you go to a yeah. club, go to a Good club. Rhythm, rhythms. Yeah, if you go to a club, it's so fun to go to a club and do what you do to bumping beats. <laughs> that's probably what she'd want to do. Wanna... Oh, that's probably all she'd want to do. I think that's all she'd want to do. All, all you want, all you want to do is dance. That's right. That's all she wants to do. Oh my god, <laughs> that fucking song! I'm gonna resist the temptation to do that song next week because <laughs> I already have one in mind. Those are uh, funny songs too, because those are the songs where, man, you talk about cliches. There are a million ladies throughout music who've just wanted to dance. It's so true. No other interests. Yep. That's all they want to do. All you want to do is dance. You either want to dance yeah, or have You think fun. that because you've been hanging around the club and you saw me come in and dance and then leave. Yeah. You don't have object permanence. <laughs> <laughs> when I left the club, I went home, I went to bed, I went to work the next day, I wrote a poem. Yeah. But you think because you that's all you've seen me do. Yep. Yeah. And there's all, always the gross part of that innocent sounding thing is all you want to do is dance. I know that 
because you didn't want to do the thing I was hoping you wanted to do. <laughs> you didn't like my idea. <laughs> my idea is similar to dancing, but. Right. Why can't I find a woman who wants to dance and fuck ugly dudes? <laughs> <laughs> All you want to do is dance. Uh, Why do you have two interests? <laughs> Here's a, is speaking as as an ugly dude because I'm all right looking, but listen, listen well, I know who I what I look like. For the sake of this uh, bit, every now and then I'll I'll see a really ugly dude who just gets all the ladies, and I'll think, so what? I wasn't ugly enough. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do wrong? Stuck in the middle of the bell curve. Yeah, yeah. So I get it. I'm not Rick Ocasek ugly, but. I'm not good looking. Come on, ladies. Come on, man. I could get uglier. Yeah. I, I could I could get in a motorcycle wreck or something. What do you need? <laughs> if you could be super specific. Yeah. Be back here in an hour. <laughs> With like a an iron burn on my face. Scar? Is that what it is? Do you, do you yeah. <laughs> then they like me because then I'm definitely crazy and dangerous because <laughs> Got a razor. <laughs> he's a, he's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. What does he do? I cut himself with a razor because <laughs> he didn't like me dancing all the time. Yeah, are you sure he's a bad boy and not just emo? Because that's not actually bad boy. No, that's a, those are sleepy boys. <laughs> <laughs> those are boys with thyroid trouble. <laughs> oh. Hey, man, did you know? That Billy Joel recorded a Christmas song called "Have a Little a Merry Little Christmas," a very classic Christmas song. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. I did not know that. Did it as a duet with which famous uh, Broadway person? Oh wow! I say Broadway person, but this Broadway person has had many other careers in television, uh, movies. Streisand. Person had a talk show. Oh, okay. Well, wow. This person had a, a talk show in the same studio where I currently work on a talk show. Son of a bitch. I know, right? I was as shocked as you are now. Had a talk show. Harry Connick Jr. No. Although very good guess because he covers all those bases. Yeah. Um, oh, son of a bitch. So he had a talk show or she had a talk show, but I don't think it's uh, uh, I don't think it's Chelsea Handler. Um, <laughs> nope. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Um, star of the good place. Uh, not Kristen Chenoweth. Um, no. Megan Mullally? <laughs> no. Uh, you get one more guess, and then I will throw a koosh ball at you. All right, sweet. Um, that was a hint. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell. Oh, wow. I, I don't know that I never I ever need to hear that, but great. Uh, we listened to it earlier and you uh, don't. Yeah, she's not a good singer. Correct. And uh, I like her well enough. I, I loved her in A League of Their Own. Did you ever watch, what is the, oh no, I'm not going to remember the name of the show. She... <laughs> plays the mother to a female basketball player on a Showtime show that I can't remember the name of. Damn it. It's hard doing these shows when you don't do any research and you're <laughs> old. <laughs> yeah, alternative title for our show is we're not trying very hard. <laughs> not trying very hard. If you are going to get into deep cut podcasting, you should write something down. Yeah. That's what I learned. Yeah, that's funny that he, well, of all people doing it with Rosie O'Donnell, that's fine. He probably likes her. They're probably friends. I'm sure that's what happened. Probably. They probably had a lot of fundraisers and stuff together. They're both uh, activists. Now, for that particular song, was that a tr uh, charity thing? I don't know. Probably. 
We don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I'm now, and I'd be willing to, willing to bet that she's a Billy Joel fan. That she loves Billy Joel. I'm That's sure. a safe bet. Yeah, and yeah. not the way that some people decide to say they are because he's been around for a while. She's right. got bona fides. Yeah, she probably would have got that clue of yours. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh. go. Oh yeah, I remember. I was alive in the seventies. That's when everybody was mean at me, mean to me. They were fat shaming me, and I couldn't come out of the closet. Yeah, it was great. She'd say, "Yeah, the good old days." Oy. Go. I wasn't trying to start anything, Rosie. It's just a clue. She can snap at you. Yeah, it's hard to blame her. Yeah, well, that's why I haven't had her on a guest on our show yet. I'm a little, don't want her to snap. Not yet. Not yet. The door's not closed though. No. We uh we got one one person sent a message about last week's episode, and they just let us know. Yeah, Billy Joel is in in interviews has said that's not a very good song, so he agrees with you guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> I had a feeling he would because it's hard to say that that's a great song. I do love that about him. I can't think of any other artist who talks about how much he hates his songs. <laughs> I've told you on in it's not inside the actor studio, but the mu musician version of that show, if you remember that. Uh huh. And they, he was talking about when he shows up at a bar and there's a piano player and they see him and they start playing piano man. And he got and he said it's it's a great moment because there's always a moment when they're playing it and then they realize how repetitive it is and they have <laughs> to keep going. And I always find it's very funny that he said that. <laughs> they get to the second part and they realize, oh, it don't do nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And that's him talking about it. That's great. Yeah. Love that. I mean, you have to, anything you wrote that long ago, you can't possibly still think it's good. Yeah. And if that's it is, not, that's not limited to comedy. Unless you're Aerosmith and you're like, yeah, we still don't know how we wrote Dream On. Right. That was the one song we wrote. <laughs> and Walk This Way. Dream On and Walk This Way are about the only ones that I go, yeah, those are classics. Yeah, absolutely. Everything else is disposable horseshit. <laughs> That's why that podcast didn't last very long. Right. We talked about those two songs. and like, That's it. Still did 34 weeks, though. Yeah. <laughs> This week, we'll be talking about Dream On again. I have a lot of new thoughts. Yeah. And we'll talk about the show Dream On a little bit just to fill time. <laughs> uh, Brian Ben Ben. <laughs> I did not National remember. Treasure. Yep. That show was okay. It was very innovative yeah. at the time. Yeah. And, a lot and now of, it's not. Yeah. Lots of sex in that movie, in that show. There was a lot of sex. Yeah. I think that's what drew us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, next week, um, Billy Joel, everyone calls him the piano man. There was a time where they, I don't know if it was him or his PR people or whatever, were trying to get a different name, different little nickname to stick based on this song, The Stranger. Oh. They were like, that seems sexier and cooler than Piano Man. <laughs> let's let's uh, start calling him the stranger. And it uh, didn't work out. That's so funny because that is that is a cliche of a dork who tries to give himself a nickname. That's great. Yeah, don't do it. Hey guys, call me this. No, Spaz. Sorry. <laughs> nope. We're sticking with Spaz. That's what uh, your parents named you. Yeah. <laughs> You're proud of it. You come from a long line of spazzes. <laughs> it's hard to believe there was a long line. Yeah, well, they shortened it. Uh, they shortened it at Ellis Island. The whole name is Spaz Stick. Yeah. Sounded too Jewish, so they shortened it. <laughs> That's why it's a slur and you can't say it. Oh. What was it George Miller who had the great joke about I think it, I'm gonna pretend it was. It's like my last name is Miller. They shortened it at Ellis Island. It used to be 
Miller. That, yeah, that's George Miller. Fucking great. George Miller was one of the finest, just pure comics. And one of the many things I loved about Letterman was Letterman was relentless in making sure he gave him regular appearances. Yep. So he could make money. I think he tried acting once and he was terrible. Yeah. This wasn't ever going to be that. Just used his show to take care of him. Yeah. Pure, pure stand up. And he was just funny as fuck. And then, uh, uh, like a lot of old guys do, he got sick and he passed. But what a fucking great comic. Fantastic. Super yeah. admired him, too. Just the fact that, because I loved, loved Steve Martin, of course. And I understood later, but it broke my heart when he quit doing stand up. It really did. Later on, I'm like, well, of course he quit, but. <laughs> sure, he didn't need that. Yeah. But the guys who were just like, no, this is the thing I wanted to do. Yeah. I fucking love that. I'm going to find some George Miller clips to watch. Yeah, that's a good use of time. I, you know what? And so I don't forget, I will include in the links at the end a good George Miller clip. Great. For you folks. Because For Dave. Yep, for Thank Dave. For, for Dave, who, despite all his flaws, is objectively a faithful friend. And, yeah. and the only thing anybody needs to be most of the time. All right. That's All right. Somber enough. No, <laughs> All right. Uh, good, good. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. You're very nice. Yeah, good job, y'all.